This is a pot which was built. This is in, virtually invisible. I mean, I would have not even seen that because I would have mistaken it for a bit of lichen or something. Mm -hmm. So, John, tell me about this. So these, uh, this is um, the Heath Potter wasp pots then. So this, this one here was built uh, in the week on about Wednesday or Thursday. So the wasp takes a couple of hours to build that. And then she flies off, catches caterpillars and puts these paralysed caterpillars into the pot. And when it's finished, her egg's in there as well and that's all sealed up. And then this time of year, they often build multiple pots. So she's built another pot. And then she's currently filling it up with caterpillars. So there'll be an egg in there and she's going to ferry in these caterpillars which she finds on the heather and gorse. Flies in every hour or so with one and puts it in there and then she's off hunting again. I mean that's quite astonishing that, that I mean those those look like you know from a distance of two feet where she's about where I am now those look like little Greek urns. Oh they are, <laughs> well they're exactly like that aren't they, they're incredible structures. Um, and if you come over here, we've got one which is actually in the process of being built, so we can actually oh, show yes. you how one of these things Absolutely. is actually being built. So There's the wasp, and so she's, we just found this one a short while ago. So she's building, it's like a ring potter would build a, a pot, just getting little semi-circular sections of mud so it's into the pot. It's like a sort of coil pot kind it of. It is very like a coil pot, yeah. Um, so she'll take about 25 trips, she collects a little ball of clay on the quarry over there and then she brings it in and she'll, so she's just teasing it up into almost like paper thin mud into this beautiful structure as you can see there with her jaws and she knows exactly you know, how to build this amazing structure, she knows exactly when to, as she's at the moment just starting to build the top of it and then eventually she'll put a little neck and a, and a lip on it. Should be just about finished. She'll fly back to the quarry. So they're collecting clay which looks pretty dry, so they must also be getting water from somewhere. Yeah, they collect water as she goes. Uh -huh. Collect water from the ponds and then look at the pot. So there it is. You can see the bit she's just done is still wet, but it will dry very, very quickly. So you see that little semicircular yeah. bit. So she's not too far off finishing now. That's quite a big pot compared to the other ones. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger, isn't it? Yeah. Um, right, so just put that back where it was. So she's going to finish building that pot. She's going to fill it with uh, presumably paralysed caterpillars. Yeah. And then she's going to lay an egg. And or she laid an egg. So she already laid an yeah, egg, she'll right? She'll finish the pot and she'll lay an egg first of all. Right, right. Then she'll go off and hunt for caterpillars. Uh huh. And then when the, when it's full, and it can take up to thirty-eight caterpillars to fill wow. up the pot, depending on the size of the caterpillars. Um, and then when it's full up, then she'll seal it up, and then. That pot will remain there until next April, May, or probably to early June, late May, early June, when the new wasp will emerge. So it's really firmly attached to that bit of heather because it's got to remain there right through all the winter storms. Sure, yeah. Might get covered in snow and all sorts, but it, they're pretty tough things. And it's all just made out of mud, and they must add something with their saliva to that mud to actually make it waterproof and yeah. able to just, it's quick drying. You know, if you just got a bit of mud off that quarry, added some water and then tried to make a pot yourself and then it rained, it would just disintegrate. So the wasp was obviously putting some sort of chemical in so there. So they must have a, a waterproof additive. Yeah, some sort of quick drying waterproof, you know, wow. special uh, chemical it's got in its saliva. But you can see there, if you look at the, look at the bottom, you see it is just paper thin, that mud. It's fashioned well. it into a, it looks darker on the inside. Do they line it with some insulating material oh, as no, well no, or not? No, it's just because it's a bit shaded inside. It's all oh, okay, the same mud. Okay. Yeah, so she's just collecting well, she's mud. Oh, here oh. she is. There she is with the mud. This one usually lands on her original pot and then goes around and starts to build. 
she's doing another little section she'll move on to a different bit of the pot each time apart from when she does the neck and then she just goes round and round and round rather than sitting in one position if we look closely you see the way she uses her legs to sort of anchor herself around uh, the pot and then she's got her head inside and so the inside and she smooth it smooths the inside with her jaw so the inside of the pot's very very smooth but the outside's quite rough or she's just holding onto it with her legs so it must be quite difficult once she's tapered it once it tapers to smooth the top of it then so it's just the bulb yeah while yeah she's still got this width. yeah she gets her head right in there and just does yeah. the top bit wow. it's best when she builds the lip you'll be able to see her really well how she actually does manipulates the clay at the moment she's got her head right inside so it's a bit difficult to see it How far do they go from the quarry? Because this is quite close, isn't this it? This is a close one. This is an easy one to find. Yeah. So they can go up to 120 metres okay. away. It's quite tricky when they go that far. Now this is a, a quite a clay rich area. There are a number of um, clay pits around here. So oh, yeah. does, that, does that make it an ideal Oh yeah, habitat? I mean, the, the potter wasp in Britain anyway only lives on heaths. So it's called the heath potter wasp. Um, it needs heathlands which have got water on all, all of the year, um, certainly right through the summer, um, permanent water, so that counts out a lot of heathlands which are quite sandy, right. and needs uh, quick draining. Um, and as well as that, yeah, it needs ex exposures of clay soil, so here in the, to the China clay district there's lots of little patches of exposed clay uh, for the wasp to use. But the water is the really essential thing. It's, you know, it's, it can often find clay in you know, where you wouldn't even think there was clay, but um, it's, it's, if the water dries up, they just can't build the pots. And is it only the heath potter wasp that makes the pots like this with the little lips? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got quite a few other potter wasps of that family in Britain, but we're the only one that builds these beautiful pots, like these okay. Grecian urn pots, is, is our heath potter wasp. So the characteristics that it, uh, that it requires, the characteristics of the heathland are, would obviously be heather, um, water and clay, those, those three yeah, elements. Yeah, heather and western gorse here we've got uh, these sort of uh, lowland heaths. The western there. gorse is the low-lying gorse. Yeah, yeah. the flowers in the summer. Yeah, it's this one here, as opposed to the European gorse which is a much big, bigger it's and bigger bushier. Thing, yeah, yeah. And the gorse. western gorse flowers mainly in late summer with the heather. And that's because the caterpillars feed on the western gorse. Well, she collects. Yeah, she does yes. like caterpillars. That she collects any caterpillars really. All right. But a lot of the caterpillars on the heathland feed on the flowers of gorse and heather, and there are others which live on live on the leaves. But they do particularly like at this time of year. They bring in a lot of yellow caterpillars. Not uh -huh. sure what what colour was the caterpillar you saw brought in. Yellow. Yeah, so yeah, they oh, so you can tell where they're hunting by the cat colour of the caterpillars. And are they? just as likely to build their little pots on the gorse or most of the pots on the heather? Yeah, they build them pretty well. Mo there's a slight bias towards heather, but they'll build, you know, they build pots on either heather or gorse. They can be live or dead. And sometimes they build them, in when it's very hot in the summer, they build them on these grass stems like this. Oh. So you just get a pot built there. Oh. But it only seems to be when you get really hot weather in oh, June. They do so Bridget, how did you get interested in potter wasps? <laughs> From following John on Twitter, uh -huh. like most people. Yeah, just seeing the pots, seeing the photographs and John's paintings. Um, yeah, I had no idea something quite as extraordinary and exotic as this. We'll let her come in. Actually. Well, here. It's incredible. It's just amazing. It is amazing. Right, so we'll let her come down. It surprised me as well when I, when I saw so we came last September hoping to see them build and we saw one um, checking out a quarry, that's as far as we got. Um, but yeah, I didn't expect them to be, I mean they're not big, but I, I thought they were going to be minuscule. I hadn't realised that, that they were this size. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're proper wasp size, aren't they? Yeah, because yeah. they don't look like wasps, not no, like wasps no. that yeah. we think. Yeah, they are actually, they're fairly closely related to what, you know, the wasps you get in your kitchen and whatever. Yeah, Vespine wasps, yeah. yeah. They roll their wings up when you when they're at rest, so oh, they are in yeah. that family, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I've noticed that, but I didn't know that's what they were doing. Yeah, so they are they are 
They're in that family of wasps. Yeah. Oh, do they have a sting? They have got a sting, yeah. Well, they sting the caterpillars. Oh, right, of course, them. yes. But it wouldn't, I mean, I've been stung by one, but... You wouldn't notice really, it, yeah, right. I hardly notice it. Yeah, they can paralyse a caterpillar. I might do it. It's minuscule, isn't it? Well, yeah. It's not. Pops the, it's got another yellow caterpillar again off the course. And then off she goes. She can get out. They don't take long, do they? Put oh no, the they zap in. the caterpillars in. And they're off. And then she's in a bit of a fly around. And then off she goes. So that's quite lucky then to see that. That's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah, fluky. That. Yeah, it's really fluky. <laughs> Gosh. Um, I've only done that a couple we of times. We just saw another one taking a caterpillar in. One that we haven't seen. Yeah, there's another triple pot here, yeah. I'll mark that one. That's brilliant.